Hi guys, and welcome to today's task. For today's task, I am going to be setting my outlets for the entire garage. That includes my ceiling outlets for garage door openers, and hopefully I can get my light boxes set as well. So we've got a lot to cover today, but first thing I wanted to do was get rid of some of the breeze and some of the snow. Over the last weekend, we got a foot of snow, which was a lot of work to plow, and I'm really tired of uh, shoveling the inside of the house. As you can tell, it gets in at certain areas that aren't all the way sealed. And we are coming down to the last few weeks of framing, and so hopefully the house can be sealed off after that. So what I've gone and done is put this visqueen up. It's a six mil. A lot of it is remnant of what I had when we put the vapor barrier down in the basement underneath that bottom slab, which you're supposed to do, so you had extras of that. So I'm trying to use that up where I can. And I initially just stapled it, it flew off six mils with a staple doesn't hold against very heavy winds and very heavy snow so i've gone ahead and ripped junk boards leftover boards that i have just scrap pieces that are odd size i rip them down to about two inches and then i just tack this up with a trim nailer i've been trying to use the longest pieces that i can and i save those for the longest runs on the windows and then little pieces I just put in because it, it holds, it's strong. It's not going anywhere. It's gonna be a bear cat to tear it all off, but it will save pain and frustration in the long run because it's keeping the snow outside. On to the next step of this garage layout is setting boxes. And I think it's really simple to wire a garage if the boxes are already preset. So I like to just go through and put them where I want them. And then I kind of look at it and say, oh, maybe I want some more, or maybe I don't need all the ones I put in. It just seems to work simple if I just have got it mapped out already in my head of where I want an outlet to be, where I want a light switch to be and then I just pull wire to it. I have single gang, I have double gang, and we are gonna put them in certain locations. And one of the number one keys to wiring a garage that I don't think a lot of people do, this is an extra thing, and if you're getting ready to build your house, I recommend this in your garage, is never put outlets next to each other on the same circuit. If I have an outlet, say here, the outlet that's gonna be over here, I don't want on the same circuit for a couple reasons. Most people stack all of their tools or utilities in the garage that are garage utilities, say an air compressor, say a space heater, say drills, say whatever it is, they put it all right next to each other and they end up always being on the same circuit. So they'll trip that switch very easily. So if you go every other, that means that load is dispersed across two circuits rather than just one. So the likelihood of tripping it is really, really small or at least reduced by half. Now that we have all of our outlets marked, I can go ahead and tell them in. And it's really simple. I take the bottom of the box, line it up with the bottom of my line, and nail it in. Need a hammer. Over there. Once again, nail it in. Now, if you're not familiar with how these boxes work, these little tabs are the dimension of your sheetrock. They are meant to hold this out so that you don't have a gap between your sheetrock and your box. You'll be fluid. So you put this against whatever post you're nailing it to to hold the box out that half inch. If you pound those nails too tight, you will shatter this box. So really watch where you're starting to squeeze so you don't misshape it anything. But that was good, easy, simple. And I always just tap one nail so it seats that side, and then I go to the next nail, seat that one, and then send them home. And if you are not aware, maybe you're using some old just hand-me-down hammer, which is great. I love that. And I like not spending a fortune on tools if you don't need to. 
but I also do know a better tool makes a job go a lot easier. And this is a framing hammer. I will link this one in the description. And the reason I like it is one, because it's light. Two, it's steel, it's not gonna break, at least for anything I'm doing right now. And three, the waffle face head. That allows me to hit the nails and it to not slip off and slide. A lot of bent nails usually come from the hammer hitting it wrong. And you wouldn't believe it, but hitting something requires a little bit of traction on the head so it doesn't slip and slide. It hits it and stays put. And it really makes the difference. And I promise you, the more you use a hammer like this, you won't want anything else. I don't like old hammers anymore unless I'm using finish work nails. Now this is a two gang box and I'm gonna put a few of these higher up on the wall. Um, and that is because sometimes you're working on an area where you need just multiple outlets really quickly. So I'm putting these on the higher up ones, but they all will alternate so that um, they're not on the same circuit once again. This is a little bit of a tight spot, but I think we can make this hammer work. And once you start hammering more, you'll start using this area the most. This is an example of our kick out. We're gonna sheetrock this and this will hold it out. If you don't, and say this is set back flush, you cannot have just bare sheetrock in this void. You will be required by an inspector for it to pass inspection to have an extension box. And they do make them and they're really simple, but it's something that you don't wanna pay for if you don't have to. Now, there are some outlets that you're gonna end up with in the long run that you're gonna need an extension box, maybe because trim hits them or you gotta double up the sheetrock on some areas, who knows what, and you'll have a few of those maybe, but you can at least avoid them if you do it right from the beginning. Offset back, call it good. There isn't necessarily a perfect height for outlets. Um, some old outlets were put at like 10 inches, some I've seen at 18. I like a foot. A foot gives me enough room for at least an eight inch baseboard, which is what we're gonna do. So that gives me a still a plenty of gap where I'm not gonna be touching or having to trim anything in the baseboard or in the cover plates to make it work. So we've got good distance, but it's not in the way. Getting ready to set this one and I had to fur this piece out. The rest of these are furred out to match our shear wall. Now the reason we only have wood on this side is because it's easiest to shear this side rather than the inside of the house. And the reason we don't have it on this side, this side, is because the outside has our sheeting which creates our shear wall out there. So it is a continuous shear wall, it's just one's inside the garage, one's outside. And then we furred this out so that our sheetrock will sit flush across the top. But when I went to set my boxes on this particular one, I had to tack a couple of nails in there with some, just some brats, just so it holds it out the right offset on both. But when I ran in this one, this is a problem I ran into. The top nail went in just fine, no problem. The bottom nail, however, ran into a knot. And when I tried to drive it home, that happened. So. Note to self, if you're starting to get back pressure, kind of look and see if there's a knot. If so, pull the nail out and put a screw in and salvage the box. This one's no good anymore. 
Maybe I can use it somewhere else, we'll see. Kind of a bummer. All right, the garage is completely laid out as far as outlet boxes go. But there's two more I need to do. And they're the most important in a garage because your garage doors are powered by outlets. So you need to put outlets in the ceiling for your garage doors. Now the rule of thumb is however high your garage is, your outlet needs to be two feet further back than the height. So say your opening is 10 feet high, you need to be 12 feet back with your outlet from center of the door and center here as well. What is nice is because they have those blocks there, I know which truss line I need to be in. So that makes it really, really simple. They are eight foot doors, which is great. And so I need to be 10 feet back. guys with that box and that box our entire garage is 100% laid out it is starting to get late so I'm gonna call it a day but tomorrow I am gonna start wiring so you are not gonna want to miss out on that vlog and how I show you how to alternate outlets so your garage has multiple breakers so that you don't run into that problem of tripping a breaker every time you want to use something in your garage which is your work zone your utility zone you definitely don't want that problem. So I'll show you how to do that in the next video. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And until next time, we'll see you later.